A lot of people ask me what computer do I use while well, I just upgrade my computer after two years. These are computers I paid full retail price for. It was not sponsored. And so this is something I heavily researched and found out myself. You might be wondering why I don't run a desktop. I prefer gaming laptops for numerous reasons, lower power, it's portable, a couple other things. I understand you get more for your buck on a desktop, but uh, here's my old laptop. And in the previous screen, you saw the specs of my new laptop. And in this video, I wanna go over all the great things about this laptop and why it's one of the best bang for your dollar laptops out there right now. Um, I looked at Asus, I looked at Alienware, I looked at some of the other companies and I'm happy with both HP and Lenovo. So let's go ahead and unbox this and I'll share with you my pros and cons of this particular unit. A quick tour around the computer. First, you can see the bezels are very slim. Really like that touchpad, extremely responsive. Not great for gaming, you definitely wanna get a mouse. I've tried gaming with it, it was awful. A numpad, love that there's a numpad on here. Most 15.6 inch computers do not have the numpad. The 16 inch screen was able to fit the numpad. This is huge for me, I know a lot of people don't care about that. For me, that was a welcomed upgrade. The screen is extremely bright. We got 100, 165 hertz, G-Sync, uh, 500 CD slash M brightness. Um, it comes calibrated out of the box. Beautiful, beautiful display. Uh, you can turn on HDR. It does it all, okay? Um, so that concludes that. You got the webcam up there. Speaking of the webcam, let's have a look over here. And at the ports, let me shut this. Oh, by the way, the monitor does not go all the way back. It goes to about that point there, and there's a hard stop. So it is not a completely shareable monitor, but that's okay. All metal frame here. Very build quality is amazing. You got the two rubber pad or three rubber pads on the bottom here. You got ventilation here. Speaking of ventilation, you got the speaker the port there. You got ventilation on each side. And you got a huge vents out the back as well. But while we're on the topic of the webcam, this switch right here is a kill switch for the webcam. I just turned it off or turn it on. You have surround sound auxiliary port, USB 3, I believe, on that one. On the other side, you have no ports in the front, no LEDs either. I love that about this one, is that this isn't glowing. The front, it's a very unassuming laptop, if you didn't know otherwise. That is awesome to me. And uh, two USB C's on the side here, that's it. So you got two USB C's, one USB regular or um, A. And then uh, in the back here, lots of stuff going on. You've got the power. And remember, the power brick is huge in this thing. you got the USBs. Um, one of them is a power will uh, put out power if you want to charge something. And it'll always be, you can also turn on always on power. And then you got HDMI. you got USB, which also, uh, you know, can do a, a display port as well. And then you have gigabit, gigabit ethernet here. And then you have the cooling. Just to show you, this is the 300 watt brick on top of, you know, Lenovo's proprietary little um, cable here. So these things are expensive. You ever need to replace this? I'm assuming it's like a hundred bucks from the, you can get aftermarket ones or whatever, but these things are expensive, especially the more watts you're pumping out of these things. Um, keep that in mind. So as far as gaming performance here, you can see what settings I run this on. I only run it at 144 FPS because my mo I put it to an external monitor and that monitor is only 144 Hertz, but it is a 1440p monitor. Um, and then my 3D resolution, I can't, if you run it at 100, you're gonna be getting like 40, 50, 60 frames. But you can see here as I zoom in, you can easily get 144 frames in Fortnite at 1440p um, at pretty much ultra res. Um, so upgrading to a 3080 will probably give you that 4K gaming, uh, but Fortnite's a really hard game to run in my experience compared to others. Like Counter-Strike, you're gonna be running hundreds and hundreds of FPS. Legal, let all that stuff is not as powerful. So that's why I'm only showing Fortnite here. You can easily do a GPU comparison, but even right now that the 4060 is out, um, you know, the only thing that's really going to outperform this is a 4070, a 3080 um, from a laptop perspective. So it's a really good even point for me uh, as far as performance to price balance. Um, I'm happy with this choice from that, from that gaming perspective. All right, now as far as Wi-Fi, I am rocking my own 6E system. Uh, you can see I purchased it back in November of last year. And uh, so this is totally Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi. I'm about uh, only like 15 feet from the router, but there's a wall in between the router and this computer. 
And as you can see, it's killing it. I'm getting, I uh, pay for one terabyte up, one terabyte down. So I get the full one terabyte, um, you know, in wired, but this is fantastic as far as Wi-Fi goes. I'm, I'm super happy about that. The 6E allows you to have that separate channel, you know, that backhaul gives you that, you know, a little bit of oomph, especially if you have a busy network. All right, now we're on the computer here, and this is the Lenovo Legion software. And uh, one of my cons to the computer was there's just a ton of updates. Those four updates you saw back there, I had to update the NVIDIA drivers, the Intel drivers, the CPU, the, the built-in GPU, um, the BIOS needed to be updated. Then Windows had all these updates. Windows 11 updated for a few hours. So I, that was kind of annoying to me that when you get this computer, expect to spend five to six hours not sitting in front of the computer, but letting it download, update, do all those things. Um, so here's the webcam. It's it's um, 720p. It's pretty garbage for the most part. Um, but a lot of gaming laptops are getting rid of their game their their um, you know webcams. Like I said, with that webcam shut off switch, I really don't mind it. Although you know the touch the, the you know the the webcam shut off switch isn't perfect either like i'm sure there's a way to get around that if somebody hacks you or whatever but um so here's a little bit more for the accessories and things like that in the software i'm not a fan of more bloatware myself i wish i could handle this all manually but uh here you are um the, i haven't really messed with the gpu overclock i bet you i could do that and get some extra frames especially in fortnite and things like that but it plays good as is um you know i might mess with that later there's also network prioritization there's like extra security features um, and then the keyboard itself, which we're going to go over here in just a second. There's also this little, you know, what's your CPU, GPU, and SSD doing. Um, there's three thermal settings here, as you can see. You can also do it. There's a keyboard on the shortcut to hit FN and then a button, and you can change between performance, balance, and uh, low. And then that'll actually help the battery. Uh, a little bit and then you have these additional gpu modes here i'm in hybrid mode but you can uh, force it to use the nvidia gpu especially if you want like some higher performance but you're going to be drawing more power doing that um so you can kind of play with that um I, i'm you know as, if i'm not gaming you know you'd be surprised i don't really or if i'm not rendering a video or gaming you know i'm not really using the computer to its fullest um and then you have some other options here rapid charge uh charge with computer off and then you have um, some more things with your sound and your media uh, that you can play around with uh, as well. And um, this is like the hardware scan is like a way to, to basically like a let me scan your hardware, make sure you see if anything's going wrong with it. And then this, uh, what is this, Nahemic is owned by Steel Series, So, you know, it's just a way to tune your sound depending on what kind of sound system you're using. Me personally, I use a gaming headset if I'm going to be gaming. I don't... Um, really mess with surround sound or use the internal speakers much. Um, I, that's why I like that it has a headphone jack. I'm a big fan of that. Although many of the new uh, gaming headsets have USB, so you can always do that. So here's the keyboard. Um, I'm going to move the camera so you can actually see the keys and I'll, and I'll turn off the light as well. You can have some pre-done profiles or the thing I love about it is you could just turn it off completely. You could pick individual colors. You can make it go left to right, up and down, you name it. It's got four different zones. So, um, you can, if you're into that kind of thing, there you go. But like I said, you know, if that's the only RGB on this thing is right there. So now here's in the underside. You can see three solid heat sinks here. I just wanted to show you that this thing is cooling like crazy. You can even see the heat pipes there. You got one, two, three heat pipes in the back. And there's actually a fourth heat, heat pipe in the middle left of your screen uh, that kind of goes in. There it is. You can see it better when I take off the shields. You can two, see the two solid state um, hard drive slots with the gold covers there. Um, you can also see the RAM there. The RAM is not soldered in both modules you can take out. So you could put two 16 gig modules in there to get 232. Here it is with the, um, heat sink on, um, you know, one heat sink off, two heat sinks on. You can also see the fans here. And what I noticed about this computer compared to some other gaming laptops is the, is the fins on the fan get more and more, the distance between them get smaller. I wonder if that's what helps. So like I said, here's the RAM up to two sticks. You can easily get up to 32 gigabytes or even 64 gigabytes. To me, 16 is plenty. I've never maxed that out. Maybe 32, but in my opinion, it's not worth it. Remember, this is DDR5 over DDR4 in the past. So if you do want to upgrade your hard drive, you're going to want to take off these three bolts here. Um, the, um, the, one in the, the one on the bottom of the screen is for actually taking out the hard drive. 
And then this is the, it comes with a Samsung SSD, which only has the memory on one side of the hard drive. The reason for that is there's a ribbon cable in the way. And so you have to have a hard drive with only one set of memory on it, that ribbon right there. So that's why one of the cons of this model is that if you upgrade the stock solid state hard drive, you have to find one that doesn't have memory modules on both sides. It can only be a one-sided hard drive you replace it with. Now the other hard drive slot, which is the secondary hard drive slot on stock, it comes empty with this model. I added my own extra one terabyte. So I'm up to two terabytes. I used the stock one and I added one more and uh, which they're super cheaper now, 50 bucks. It could swap right in there, super easy. And I included this photo here just to show you the hinges, where the hinges connect to the motherboard there. Um, and then where the speakers are located there, just on the side right there. So there's a little bit of the underside, really well made, a lot of heat sinks, things like that. So while I know this laptop might not be for everyone, it's a little bit more expensive than most people need to buy. I always like future proofing myself. So with that Wi-Fi 60, with the DDR5, with the latest 12th gen Intel and a 30 series graphics card, like I don't see myself upgrading for another couple of years. And then there's always the resale value as well. Like for example, if I wanted to sell my computer on the right over there, I could probably sell it today for around $700, $800. And so with that being said, what is the real cost of owning something? Um, now I understand if you're not in a situation where you could do that, that's a little different, but I justify it that way. Also the argument about going with a desktop is a solid argument, but if you are gonna be moving it around and you do use the monitor on the computer itself, then it is kind of an added bonus there. And it's hard to build a desktop with a good monitor, with a high refresh rate, with a higher resolution for under that kind of price. Uh, so let's go down the pros and cons list over here. I'm happy with the price I paid. I think it's around 1450 before taxes now, that might change. Um, ever since the pandemic, I think these lab gaming laptops and graphics cards in general are going down. So these prices may continue to drop. Um, it has the latest in the IO ports, everything from the USB 3.2 to the Thunderbolt. It's got it all, even HDMI 2.0, which can handle up to 8K resolution. I don't see myself doing 8K anytime soon, but hey, it's there if I need it. So as it does have DDR5 ready, it's not soldered on, so if I wanted to upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM, I have that capability. Remember the hard drives, it was perfect for me. I now have two full terabytes of hard drive space. I don't see myself needing anything more anytime soon. Um, the display, extra, extra bright. As you can see in this video right here, it is considerably brighter than the other, and it has a little bit more refresh rate than the other one. Um, now, as far as the numpad on the keyboard, I understand some people don't care about that, but I do do a lot of data entry and things like that, so it helps me out quite a bit. And then one of my favorite pros about this computer, unlike an Alienware or an Asus, which is just loaded with RGB, this one is very subdued. It only says Lenovo on the back. It says Legion. It's super awesome as far as like a sleeper goes. It's not really a sleeper though once you see that power brick. Speaking of power brick, I should, put, I should put that under cons is that this thing has a huge power brick, but you really can't get away from that if you're gonna be running on a gaming laptop. So let's go through the cons here. Setting up the device was not a breeze. Like I said, you need the uh, Lenovo software. You have to run the updates on that. You have to run the Windows updates and the Windows updates is not ready yet. There's a ton of updates you gotta update. Um, and then there's a little bit of finicking you have to do as far as getting that graphics card working to its fullest. Make sure you get the NVIDIA GeForce experience and or set up your drivers properly so you can max out the uh, graphics card. You also gotta enable HDR if you want that in Windows and in games. You also have to change the Hertz on your screen, especially if you're using an external monitor. So there's a little bit you gotta do to really get the most out of this laptop. Uh, the one hard drive slot, if, if you get this laptop or a similar Legion laptop and it has like a smaller SSD and you wanna replace the stock SSD, that's when that's a problem there because you'll have to get an SSD that only has one side with memory modules on it, which is a slight annoyance, but you should know that. Um, number three, bloatware and software. So Lenovo, I mean, they're always trying to sell you stuff. They wanna sell you McAfee antivirus. They wanna sell you on their software. They want you to upgrade with accessories. They want you to get the extended warranty. All that stuff to me is annoying. And yes, it's there. You can get around it. To me, it's not a huge deal, but you should know it's there. Battery life, uh, you, you have a lot of flexibility here. You gotta lower the, the nits, you know, the brightness, you gotta lower the frequency on the screen back to 60 hertz, you gotta turn on the battery saver, and you can get some good mileage out of this thing and get some work done. But the minute you rev this thing up, you need that power brick, and these fans are gonna just ramp up super loud. 
are they like extra have i heard louder laptops absolutely laptops are getting better and better and better with noise but you will hear it especially compared to like a water-cooled desktop there's no comparison there um so this was a slight annoyance for me is it does not have a micro sd slot or a full-size sd card slot but they make these little usb adapters that only cost a few bucks and that's what i'm using right now so as you can see i really did my research here i wanted something that was was packed with value and performance based and had everything I wanted. The only thing I didn't get is I'd actually prefer a 17 inch screen. I like the bigger the screen, the better in my opinion, but 17 inch screens don't go on sale very often. And I just couldn't find one. I also don't like Asus or I like Asus. Asus is good. It's just their prices aren't that aren't, you have to find them on sale. I couldn't find anything exactly what I want. And then with Alienware, who's owned by Dell, my experience and what I've read from other people, whether this is true or not, I don't know, but they have a lot of proprietary software and proprietary ways that they do their you know make their shells and make their software so after a few years a lot of that software never gets updates and that's something that kind of steers me away from them um so that was why I didn't go with them. Acer makes some decent stuff. I, you know, there's other brands. Gigabit, I actually like, is a good brand, but um, they did not have this same value proposition like this one, and that's why I went with this one. But anyways, that's what I think. Let me know all think. Let me know if you like videos like this, or you'd like to know more about my last laptop or anything like that. But uh, with that, you can leave a like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.